Uh, hello there. Um, so in this video, we're going to go over um, the intro to Excel workshop. Uh, so in this video, we're just going to go over some of the basics of Excel. Um, we're first going to start with just doing some basic statistics. Um, so you want to look at kind of like your mean, median, mode, range, standard deviation um, of a particular data set. We're also going to go over how to make um, a histogram. Uh, so a histogram is a way to visualize all that data into one. Um, we're going to talk about how you can also just kind of adjust that histogram for whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, we're also going to go over how to make a bar graph um, to look at categorical data. Um, so in this case, we're going to look at, you know, for every state's gas prices, put that in a bar chart to compare. And then lastly, we're going to look at scatter plots. So how to make a scatter plot, um, how to add more than one um, data set to your um, graph. And we're also going to look at how you can add an equation of a line for a particular set of data. And you can add an R squared value to look at how well that uh, equation fits the data. Okay, so first things first, we'll look at the statistics stuff. Um, so here I just have a set of uh, random data we're gonna look at. Um, so I wanna find the mean, right? Um, so first things first, you always wanna click in the box that you want that number to go in. Um, and in Excel, whenever you wanna use a function, right? So in this case, we're trying to find the average of this data set. Um, so if you want to use the average function in Excel to just automatically pop it out, what you first have to do is find the box you want it in, then type equal. So when you type equal, it kind of enters function mode. Um, and then you want to type in the name of whatever it is you're looking for. So in this case, um, I'm looking for the mean, but Excel uses the average function. So we're going to type average, okay, and you'll see it pop up here. So what you can do is you can type out average entirely, or if you're like me, you can just double click on it. Um, so you get something that looks like this. So what I want you to do now is to highlight the data or highlight the data that you want to look at. So in this case, we're going to highlight these guys, click the enter, and there you go. So 49 is the average number amongst these numbers. Okay. Same thing here. If I want to find the median, just equal median, highlight. And you click on There you go. That's the median. For mode, um, you're going to have multi and singular. You want singular most of the time because you want to find just the single most common number. Okay. Then you click enter. There you go. Um, for range, though, so there's not a range function in Excel, but just remember that range is your maximum number minus your minimum number, right? So you can do is equal type out max. Right, and then again, just it's going to highlight your data and it's going to look for the max within that data. And then what you can do in Excel. Oh, hang on, I didn't highlight it all. Put this up. There we go. So then in uh, Excel, what you can do is um, take the output of this function, right? So that the output here is the max, and subtract that the output of this min function. So min finds the smallest number. Right. And sometimes you'll get this error. Um, that error could just be, oh, I forgot the type of parentheses, which is exactly what happened up here. Um, so it's like, oh, do you want to fix that? And most of the time you just click yes and it works just fine. There you go. There's your range, your max minus your min. Um, so again, this is an example in Excel of how you can use multiple functions within the same uh, um, same cell that you're working with. Okay, and then same thing with standard deviation, just equal STB. Uh, most of the time you want to just do STDP. Um, S is for sample standard deviation, but usually you just have a one big set of data. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, then you click enter. There you go. So that's kind of getting some of the basics of Excel. Uh, for statistics, um, well, let's say we want to visualize some of this data. What we can do is that if you have single variable data, right, um, an example of that would be like temperature, you can look at the uh, histogram for that data, but you can't make a histogram for two variable data. So like, for instance, I can't make a histogram with time and temperature, right? I would have to just look at temperature or just look at time in a certain data set. 
So anyway, if you want to make a histogram, what you need to do is just highlight your data again, which we're doing here. Then click insert. And over here, you'll have this thing that says statistical charts. Click on that and then click on histogram. Okay, I'll bring this up here. Okay, so that's a histogram, right? So a histogram, just a reminder, what it does is it takes your data and divides it up into these bins, right? Or these different like categories. And then it tells you the frequency within those categories, or it tells you the number of numbers within each bin, right? So like for instance, in from one, so the numbers that range from one to 30, you have about 17 numbers that fall within that range. Okay, um, so don't forget to, whenever you do a chart, you always wanna make sure to add a title. So in this case, this is histogram. Also, if you want to add axis titles, right? So your X and Y titles, um, what you want to do is click on your chart, click on this green cross right here, then click axis titles. Okay. They should pop up. Just double click on them. You can make it so that this is, I'm going to say categories. So if I spelled that right. Yep. Categories. And then here, I'm just going to make this uh, frequency. Okay. So we labeled our chart. Uh, let's say, for instance, though, you don't want four categories, you want more to kind of make this not as bulky. Um, what you can do is double click on this X axis here. So like, for instance, I'm just going to click on 59, click on that twice. Right. And over here, you'll have format axis and then axis options, you'll have bins. So automatic is set and it says it's kind of bulky. So I'm going to click on number of bins. I'm going to make that seven. Okay, so I made it seven bins. I'm um, gonna look a little bit more uniform now, but these numbers here are kind of ridiculous, right? All those decimal places. The way you fix that is you click on bin width right here. And this is 13.8. So I'm just gonna round that up to 14. And there you go. So seven columns, good looking numbers, right? And that's it, so that's a histogram. So histogram kind of uh, tells you your distribution of frequencies, right? or distribution of numbers. Um, so in this case, we kind of see it's, it's normally, it's kind of normally distributed, right? Even though the first category has the highest amount, it's not so different from the other categories, right? So anyway, that's how you make a histogram. And it's also how you add uh, chart labels to a title. Um, speaking of, what we're gonna do now is a bar graph, right? So a bar graph looks at comparing uh, categorical data. Um, it looks at like, for instance, let's say you're looking at the uh, different colors in an m, m package, right? You would have each color would then have a certain number of those and you would compare those to the others, right? To see which one might be the most popular color in m ms right? But in our case, we have gas prices because we want to compare each state's gas price. So what we can do is uh, we want to highlight our data. You don't, just, you don't have to highlight your uh, labels. So highlight your data all in one column, kind of like that. So I'll do that again. So click on Alaska, drag, and then highlight all of them together like that. Then click insert. And there's a bar graph right here. Then click on 2D column. Okay, so there's your graph. I also want to make this a little bit bigger because it's a lot of stuff. There you go. Okay, so now we have our states and we have our gas prices for each state, right? And this way you can really look at the differences, right? So you can see that California has a really high gas price compared to say Arkansas, right? And you can kind of see that there is kind of like a um, average, like visually you can see that the uh, gas price per state when this was taken was kind of around 250, right? $2, 250 per gallon. Um, so we wanted to, don't forget, you always want to label your stuff. So click on this, click on that, click on access titles. And here I'm just going to put gas prices in the U.S. So states. And then I'm just going to put this gas prices. You always want to include your unit too. So the unit here is dollars. And there you go. So that's how you make a bar chart in Excel. Um, pretty easy, pretty standard stuff.
Nothing too bad. Um, but now what I'm going to do is we're going to look at scatter plots. So scatter plots are really good when you're trying to look at uh, correlational data, right? So you're trying to see how the change in one thing affects the change in another, right? So in this case, what we're looking at is the correlation between um, the force of displacement for a spring and the force of uh, restorative force, I mean, of restorative force for a spring versus the amount of displacement of that spring. So to kind of help explain that, um, what we're talking about is what's called Hooke's Law. So Hooke's Law is that if you have a spring, right, let's say I have a weight on here that I pull on. So as you know, springs, um, when you pull them apart, they like to go back to the original state, right? So for a spring, what we see is that the amount of displacement I put into the spring, right, there's going to be a certain restorative force, F, that pulls that weight back to its normal spot, right, or its original spot. So how this, how this kind of works is that, you know, if I pull that weight just a little bit, there's going to be a little bit of restoring force pulling it back into spot, right? But if I pull it really far away, there's going to be a lot of force on the spring to pull it back to its original state, right? So the way we write this uh, mathematically is that the force of restoration, right? So returning to your original state is directly proportional to X, the displacement, right? by some proportional constant, which we call Hooke's constant. You can kind of think of Hooke's constant as the stiffness of the spring, right? Um, so you can also think about it, so like the way to think about that is that if, I, if a spring is really, really stiff, right? For a little amount of displacement, right? I move it just a little bit much, there's gonna be a lot of force pulling it back. Now that's because it's very hard to displace it. It's very hard to pull it apart because the restorative force is so strong. Right. But yeah, anyway, so it's just a way of saying that the force to restore a spring back to its spot is um, linear with the displacement of that spring. Right. So when I say linear, it's because you're going to have some type of one to one uh, ratio between X and F. Right. And that ratio, you know, if I rearrange this equation, it's just K. Right. A way to think about that is, you know, is if, um, if I'm displaced, right, if I stretch the spring out by one meter, if K in this case, like we have written here is two, right? What that's saying is that for every one meter I pull that spring apart, you're gonna have twice as much force bringing it back, okay? So again, just a little, also just a brief thing, you know, this is linear, it's gonna, we expect it to look like this, right? Where K, is your slope of that line when you have x in this direction and f in this direction, right? Okay, so just kind of an overlook of Hooke's law, but suffice to say is that you know, we expect to see kind of a straight line on the chart, right? In this case, since k is 2, our expected equation we would see is y is equal to 2x, right? So let's see. So what we're going to look at first is we're going to look at um, the amount of force we had versus our expected displacement. So the way we're looking at this is that um, uh, we measured the restorative force, right? But we don't know how much we displaced it, right? But given this relationship, we should be able to see some type of um, correlation between the two variables, right? Because if I have a certain amount of restorative force, then I must have had some amount of displacement, right? But we also have our expected displacement and our measured displacement. Um, so the expected displacement is what we would expect the amount of displacement to be for a particular restorative force based upon this equation right here. Right. So I input this amount of force, so I should expect a certain amount of displacement, right? Um, but we also have our measured displacement. So uh, for a certain amount of 
force, there's our expected displacement from the equation. But there's also our actual displacement, which we got um, in the lab, right? What we measured. Um, and what we're going to do is we want to look at how well our measured data compares to our expected data, right? So what we're going to do is first, we're just going to look at the experimental data. We're going to see if we do get this equation we predicted, right? So we're going to do, it's going to highlight these guys. Like that. So again, you want to just highlight the things you want to look at. So in this case, I want to look at force and expected displacement. So I'm just highlighting those two things. Okay. Then you want to click on uh, scatter right here. Then click enter, and there you go. So now you have your uh, scatter plot. So down here, the yeah, axis titles, we have our force. And here we have our displacement. Also, I forgot that units. So displacement is in centimeters, force is in units. Okay. So what we can do now is that um, let's see if this line, right, we have our data, right, um, matches what we expect it to be. So the way you do that is you want to click on your chart, click on the plus here, then see this thing that says trend line. You can check that, but you'll see it just adds a line of best fit. But we want to see if it, uh, we want to see the actual equation. So what you want to do is click on trend line, click on this black arrow here, You'll see all these, click more options. Okay, and you'll see format trend line. What you wanna do now is click on these black boxes right here. And then here's your trend line options. So here's the type of trend line. Um, for our data, the, dot, the dots are very straight. So you just want a linear line, right? Okay, then we wanna do is go down to the bottom. We have these options right here. And what we want is display equation. And there you go, see? It matches exactly how we thought it would be. So again, this is, we input a force into this equation. This is what we're expecting to see. But now let's compare that to what we actually measured in the lab, right? So the way you do that is, you have a couple of ways, but the ways I'll show you is you click on your chart, and you wanna click on right-click, not right-click, sorry. Yeah, right-click. Um, then click on select data. And here you're going to see just a collection of your data, right? So here you have your um, horizontal data, right? So uh, here that would just be force, right? And then here you have your uh, dependent data or your Y data, right? So right now all we have is expected displacement, right? You can just make sure too, this makes sense. Um, what we're doing is that we have two things we want to add. We want to add expected displacement and measured displacement. But for both of these columns, they each are um, dependent upon this column, right? So they're going to have the same x-axis values. But what we're trying to do is add um, two measurements of data that are on different um, uh, dependent values, right? So same values here, different values here. That's all uh, I'm trying to say. So the way you do that is you click on this, click select data, then click on add. So a series name, you can either just type the name, so measured, um, or if you just want to type a box with the title already in it, you can do that. So what I'm going to do is click on this black arrow here, which allows you to highlight a cell. So in this case, I'm going to click on measure displacement. Then click enter. Then here's your X values. So X values, again, this says force, right? So click on this. Click on your force values. And you don't want to include the title in this case. You just want the numbers. Okay. And then here's series Y values. So the Y values are what we're looking to add. So it's these guys. So add those. Then click enter. And okay. So as you can see, oops. So as you can see, um, orange is our measured. So one thing you can do, see if I can the line. 
that work? No line. There we go. I want to draw that line. Um, so what you can do is you can see that orange is our measured, while blue is our expected. Um, the way though you want to make sure people know that blue your graph is you add a legend. So the way you do that is click on the screen cross again, and then just click legend right here. Okay, you can ex you can ignore this uh, linear stuff for now. That's just because of the whole equation stuff. Um, but most of the time, you'll just see um, these two, expected and measured um, legends, right? Um, so now, let's say we want to add a trend line to our measured displacement, right? So same thing. You just want to click on your orange dots, right? Click on the green cross, click on trend line, click on black arrow, click on more options, trend line options, so you have linear, right? Go down, display equation. And there you go. So there's the equation for our measured data, right? And that's going to be a little different from our expected just because, you know, it's measured. It's um, you have some type of measurement error. It's not going to be perfect. Um, but this is really close to y equals 2x, right? Because, I mean, 1.96, you can round that up to a 2. This is 0 0.001. Um, so that's pretty close to 0. You can just drop that off, right? So it's pretty much as close to y equals 2. But one thing you want to look at specifically is how do we know that this equation right here is a good fit for this data, right? Or another way of saying that is, let's say, for instance, I want to plug in a force value, right? So force, but it's not in, it's not in my data range, right? Let's say, for instance, I want to type in a force of 0 0.3, right? How well would this equation predict its measured displacement? Right? Because I mean, I could plug a number in, it gives me something totally off base, right? Um, but, you know, look at the line, you can visually kind of see, oh, well, you know, it's, it's best fit line, right? You know, it's really close to those data points. So, you know, if I guess a point right here, it's going to give me a value really close, you know, it's not going to be the exact one. Um, so you can visually see that this line is a good fit. But the way you quantify that is you want to add what's called an R squared value. Um, so the way you do that, is you click on your data set again, right? Then you want to go to your trend line options again. Click on this black box guy. And at the bottom, you're going to see something that says um, display R squared. What you want to do there is click on display R squared, and there's R squared. OK? So R squared, how that works is the closer R squared is to 1, Right, so in this case, I have a 0 0.99. The closer R squared is to one, the better a predictor this equation is at finding values, right? So if R squared was like close to zero, then what that would kind of look like is, you know, I have a chart here, I have just random dots, right? Uh, it's fighting me, okay. Why it's doing that? But yeah, you have random dots, right? And if I try to add a line to that, it's way too unpredictable, right? You know, I've got I can plug in a certain value here, and it could be over here. You know, it's way too unpredictable. So you can't really add a line to that. In this case, we can. You know, we can add a line to it, and we can plug in values and have a good predicted value from that line. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's the basics of scatter plots. Um, make sure to always you know. Do it again just for reiteration. Make sure you always add your um, charts. So this is going to be displacement versus force. You know, make sure you always add your labels too. So centimeters and force, right? But yeah, that's how you um, add an R squared value to a line and how you get an equation for a line. Um, yeah, that's some of the basics. Um, hope this video helped. Um, if you have any more questions, please come see us at the art. Um, we are open uh, Monday through Thursday, available from 9, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, we also offer um, after-hours appointments, so you can get a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session for a whole hour um, on the weekends. So if you ever really don't have time during the weekday, uh, weekdays, you can always just schedule time out on the weekends. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I really hope this helps.